let's take a look at metric prefixes, conversions, and graph literacy. So to start with, metric prefixes are just a way to make your life easier. At least they're supposed to be. Um, they allow us to look at really big and really small numbers in a more convenient way. And I'm going to show you the table that you get of metric prefixes. This is what's given to you in the data booklet. So you don't have to memorize this information. You just have to know how to use it. If you look at the table, you can see, for instance, kilo. It says kilo represents 10 to the third power. So if I see kilo, it's interchangeable with 10 to the third power. So for example, a kilometer or a kilometer. A kilometer, that's kilometer. Well, the kilo prefix means 10 to the three. So one kilometer is one times 10 to the three meters or a thousand meters. Okay, um, the milli prefix, one millimeter is the same as one times 10 to the minus three meters. That milli prefix means 10 to the minus three. Let's say I had something strange like a megasecond. What's a megasecond? Well, mega means 10 to the six. So one megasecond is one times 10 to the six seconds. Likewise, a microsecond, one times 10 to the minus six seconds. So metric prefixes allow us to deal with these really big and really small amounts. Now, metric prefixes show up a lot when we do conversions. And when we do conversions in this class, we're going to use something called a conversion factor. A conversion factor is a fraction which we multiply by. And it's a special fraction that equals 1. We can multiply by it very easily without changing anything because the conversion factor equals 1. Now, the reason why it's going to equal 1 is because in the conversion factor, we're going to have the same amount on the top and bottom of the fraction. But there's going to be different units on the top and the bottom. And I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I want to convert 281 centimeters into meters. So I have 281 centimeters. That's where I'm starting. And I want to somehow get that into meters. To do that, I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. Now off to the side, I'm going to remind myself. I'm converting from centimeters to meters. The relationship between centimeters and meters is that one centimeter is equal to 10 to the minus 2 meters. Right? That centi prefix means 10 to the minus 2. So using that information, I'm going to build my conversion factor. And my conversion factor has to be a fraction. So here we go. Here's the fraction. And the way that I know how to build it is I see that I have a quantity already in centimeters. I want to get it out of centimeters. I want to destroy the centimeters. I want to get rid of the centimeters. And the only way I can do that is by putting centimeters in the denominator of my conversion factor. If I put centimeters down there, the centimeters are going to cancel out. And if the centimeters are in the bottom, then the meters must be on the top. And remember, one centimeter is the same as 10 to the minus 2 meters. So my conversion factor, in order for it to have the same amount of stuff on the top and the bottom, I have to have one centimeter and 10 to the minus 2 meters. So I build it that way, multiply everything out, and I get 2.81 meters. All right, let's look at a different example. Let's say I have 565 meters, and I want to convert that to kilometers. Well, I know that one kilometer is 10 to the 3 meters, right? Kilo means 10 to the 3. So I start out with 565 meters. I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. Here's my fraction. Now i got to figure out what to put on the top and the bottom in the conversion factor. Do I put kilometers where? Do I put meters where? Well, I'm trying to cancel out the meters. So to cancel out the meters in the conversion factor, meters have to go on the bottom. Then they will cancel out. And then kilometers have to go on the top. And I know one kilometer is the same as 10 to the 3 meters. So to have the same amount of stuff on the top and the bottom in my conversion factor, it looks like this. One kilometer over 10 to the 3 meters. Then I multiply that out, boom, 0 0.656, or excuse me, 565 kilometers. Okay, let's try a different one. 93.0 grams, convert that to kilograms. Well, 93.0 grams, I want to multiply by a conversion factor. I know a kilogram is 10 to the 3 grams, so I have to have grams on the bottom, kilograms on the top. One kilogram is the same as 10 to the 3 grams. There we go. Grams cancel out. I'm left with kilograms, 0 0.0930 kilograms. Okay, 
622 microseconds to seconds. Okay, 622 microseconds. One microsecond is 10 to the minus 6 seconds. Micro means 10 to the minus 6. So write it out. Okay, to get microseconds to cancel out, I have to put microseconds in the bottom, and therefore seconds have to be in the top. And one microsecond is 10 to the minus 6. So 6.22 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds. All right. Now, let's make it a little more complicated. Let's say I have a combination of units. Let's say I had 55.0 square centimeters. And I want to convert that to square meters. Let's see. Well, I know a centimeter is 10 to the minus 2 meters. Well, if I have 55.0 square centimeters, and I do the conversion factor, okay, centimeters have to go on the bottom, meters on the top. Okay, got that. If I do it, I, I will now only cancel out one centimeter. But I have centimeters squared. I still have another centimeter that I need to get rid of. So I have to do the conversion twice. I have to do the conversion twice to get rid of both of the centimeters in my original number. So I end up with 0 0.00550 square meters. Okay. So when you have exponents, you got to pay special attention to that. Now let's look at 35 0.0 kilometers per hour. Let's say I want to convert that to meters per second. Well, one kilometer is 10 to the 3 meters, and one hour is 3,600 seconds. It's not a metric prefix, but it's still true. One hour is 3,600 seconds. So 35.0 kilometers per hour. Well, first let's get rid of the kilometers. So the conversion factor that'll get rid of the kilometers is this. 10 to the 3 meters over one kilometer, and kilometers cancel out, and I'm left with meters up top. That's good. Now, this hour. I've got hours in the denominator to begin with. I want to cancel them out. To cancel out the hours in the denominator, in my conversion factor, I have to have hours in the numerator. So one hour divided by 3,600 seconds. If I do that, kilometers cancel out, hours cancel out, I'm left with meters divided by seconds. And if I work out the math, it's 9.72 meters per second. Okay, let's try a different one. Let's say I have 30 meters per second, and I want to convert to miles per hour. Well, I'll tell you, one mile is 1,609 meters, and one hour is 3,600 seconds. So let's see, I start out with 30.0 meters per second. First, I want to get rid of the meters. So my conversion factor should look like this. Meters on the bottom, 1,609 meters on the bottom. That's the same as one mile. All right, now I want to cancel out the seconds, but I started out with seconds in the denominator. So that means in my conversion factor, i got to have seconds in the numerator for the seconds to cancel out. So I got 3,600 seconds divided by one hour. If I do that, figure out the math, I get 67.1 miles per hour. So now let's move on to graphs. So in physics, we almost always use scatter plots or XY graphs or Cartesian coordinate graphs. These are the classic math class graphs. So we're not going to see a lot of bar graphs, pie graphs, anything like that. So we have a y-axis and an x-axis. Sometimes the y-axis is called the vertical axis or the ordinate. And sometimes the x-axis is called the horizontal axis or the abscissa. Uh, and in physics, we're going to plot all kinds of quantities. So maybe in this example, we're going to have distance measured in meters on the vertical axis and time measured in seconds on the horizontal axis. And I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, scales here. So scaled axis horizontally, scaled axis vertically. And notice that it's equally spaced here in this graph. Um, we don't have like 1, 3, 7, 12, 9, 4. It doesn't go like that. It goes equally. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And on the vertical axis, we have a different scale, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. But it goes in equal increments. And the description of the graph here is usually given as y versus x, where y is whatever is on the y-axis and x is whatever on the x-axis. So here, this is a distance versus time graph. And I'm going to add another feature to the graph. I'm going to draw a line that goes through the data. And I'll call this a line of best fit. And the line of best fit is kind of an, a way to identify the pattern in the data. And here it was pretty easy because it was a relatively straight line in the data. But we could have more complicated ones. We could have all kinds of curves, quadratics, uh, square roots, whatever. But the line of best fit allows us to identify the pattern in the data that we have. 